Hi, welcome to the latest Macworld video. I'm your host, Macworld Senior Editor Chris Breen. Well, as you may have heard, last month Steve Jobs took the stage at Moscone Center in San Francisco and announced a couple of minor products from Apple. There was something about a box that plugs into your television set and, um, what was that other thing? Oh, a phone. Yeah, a phone. And that was pretty much it from Apple. But Apple wasn't the only company at Expo, and that's what this video is about. In the next few minutes, I'd like to show you some of the highlights of the stuff that was released at Macworld Expo that didn't come from Apple. Let's start with a couple of troubleshooting utilities. The first is Alsoft's Disk Warrior. Disk Warrior? Right, it's not new, but the latest version 4.0 is. That version is not only universal binaries, so it works with Intel Macs, but it's a ton faster than the previous version 3. If you're unfamiliar with Disk Warrior, here's the gist. No other repair utility deals with low-level database corruption, the kind of corruption that can stop your Mac dead in its tracks better than Disk Warrior. Disk Warrior ships on a bootable disk, which allows you to attempt to repair a Mac whose hard drive won't boot on its own. And of course, you can run Disk Warrior from one drive to repair another. In addition to repairing low-level corruption, it can help you recover files from a drive that can't be repaired. Just bring up its preview, select the directories that you want to recover, and copy them to another drive that's connected to your Mac. Disk Warrior is $100, and while that may seem like a lot for a repair utility that does only a couple of things, those couple of things may include saving your Mac's bacon when you fail to back up your data. Micromat's Tech Tool Pro is another well-regarded troubleshooting utility. Not only will it attempt to diagnose and repair an ailing Mac, it can optimize hard drives, recover data, and securely delete data from your hard drive. But I'm not here to talk about Tech Tool Pro. Just prior to Expo, Micromat announced Protego, a $135 utility that will install a bootable version of the Mac OS on a Firewire iPod or other bootable Firewire drive or USB key drive, and includes copies of the company's Tech Tool Pro 4 and Disk Studio, which is a disk partitioning utility. What's interesting about this, other than the fact that you'll wind up getting Tech Tool Pro and Disk Studio for less than you would if you paid for them separately, is that Protogo allows you to custom configure exactly what you're going to put on the drive. For example, if space allows, you can also include other repair utilities, including the aforementioned Disk Warrior. And it can partition your iPod or drive so that it holds multiple bootable volumes. One for OS 9, another for the PowerPC version of OS 10, and a third for an Intel version of OS 10. And if you've got an iPod with limited storage capacity, an old iPod mini for example, Protogo can create an ultra-slim version of OS X and put it on the iPod, something that's very difficult to do on your own. Once upon a time, there were boatloads of painting programs for the Mac. That changed to the point where we had few choices between painting programs for kids on one end of the scale and Photoshop on the other. That's changed thanks to Ambient Design's Art Rage 2. This $20 program has more in common with Corel's $429 Paint 9.5 than it does with Mac Paint. It emulates such traditional art media as oil paint, chalk, crayon, airbrush, and glitter, and it includes a paint tube function where you can squirt virtual paint on your canvas and then smear it around with a palette knife. It also supports layers, and you could load images into the program that you can then trace over with the included tools. If you're willing to put up with fewer tools, no airbrush and paint roller for example, and don't need multiple layers, give Art Rage 2 Free Edition a try. Like its fuller featured sibling, you'll find it at www.ambientdesign.com. If you're like me, you love your TiVo digital video recorder. Roxio gives you another reason to fall in love all over again, the TiVo transfer tool bundled with Toast Titanium 8. Yep. This is the long-promised Mac version of TiVo's TiVo to Go utility. The utility that lets you copy your TiVo programs to your Mac, burn them to disk, or transfer them to your iPod. Roxio scored the exclusive rights to release the thing, and while I'm not completely tickled that I have to pay $100, which is the price of toast, to get it, I'm glad it's finally out in the world. It couldn't be much easier to use. Just launch the application and via Bonjour, TiVo Transfer will locate any Series 2 TiVo DVRs on your network. I'm afraid it won't work with Series 1 or the new Series 3. Once it finds them, select the programs you want to transfer, click the Start Transfer button, and wait a good long time while the program transfers to your Mac. 
You can also set up an auto transfer that, as the name suggests, automatically transfers episodes of selected programs to your Mac after they're recorded. Once on the Mac, select the program from the TiVo recordings portion of the library and click Toast It. The program will appear in Toast Titanium 8 within its DVD video section. From here, you can burn it to disk or export it to your iPod, iTunes, or PSP. Regrettably, it exports only at a resolution of 320 by 240, which is a limitation imposed by TiVo. However, there's a way around it. Download a copy of TiVo Decoder. You can find it by searching on Version Track or Mac Update. This is an Apple Script application that strips out this limitation by converting the TiVo file to a standard MPEG-2 file. Drag your TiVo program from the TiVo Recordings folder onto the TiVo Decoder icon. TiVo Decoder will take a couple of minutes to do its job. When done, the unprotected MPEG-2 version of the file will be listed in the TiVo Transfer window. Now choose the recording and click Toast It. The program will appear within Toast Titanium. The difference is that now when you select the program in Toast and choose Export, you'll see the option to not only transfer it to a portable player or iTunes, but you can also export it to a different video format, one that produces a frame larger than 320 by 240. Once you've exported the file, you can then take it into a program like iMovie and cut out the extraneous bits as well as the commercials. Oh wait, I was talking about Toast Titanium 8, right? Okay, Toast Titanium 8 offers a couple of other useful new features. The first is disk spanning, a feature that lets you burn folders and files of any size. If the file or folder is too large to fit on a single disk, it will be written to as many disks as it takes to do the job. When Toast creates such a set of disks, it includes a small application on the first disk called Roxio Restore. To restore your files, just launch this application and you see a directory of all the files contained within the disk set. Navigate to the files you want and click Restore to have the items copied to your Mac. And the latest version of Toast now supports Blu-ray disk burning. Now, like most of you, I don't have a Blu-ray disc recorder to test or demonstrate this feature, but I suspect that it won't be too long before we see these recorders coming to the Mac, and when they do, this is going to be a very cool feature. And finally, there's the Axiotron Modbook, a modified MacBook that acts as the first tablet Mac. Priced at $2,200 for the 1.8 GHz model, it won't be released until the spring. I had precious little time to play with one, but it looks intriguing. We'll definitely have more on this one when we lay hands on it. And there you have it, some of the highlights from last month's Macworld Expo. And now I have a confession to make, and that confession is that I actually shot this video about three weeks ago, and so some of it is out of date. In particular, the material about the modbook. If you go to the Macworld video prior to this one, you'll see that John Seff, an editor at Macworld, has laid hands on a modbook and had a chance to use it for a while, and he offers you a nice little video tutorial on what it can do. He also wrote a companion piece for the Macworld website. You'll find a link to that piece in this episode's show notes. And that does it for this time. I'm Chris Breen. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next month.